foundation of the world. The Lamb was slain. So we thank you for provisions for us long before we were even born. Uh, that you have given us a way out yes. from the wrath of our sin. Yes. Yes. Pray now you forgive me of my sin. Yes. Cleanse me from unrighteousness. Stand in and speak through me. That the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Yes. The Lord <coughs> strength my yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. For they were desiring verses of God, the God of heaven, concerning his secret. That Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret which was revealed to Daniel in the night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Okay. Uh, then 21, uh, I'm sorry, 21 and, and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removed the kings and set up kings and giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth was in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him. I thank thee and praise thee, O Lord God, my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and hath made known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the kings of battle. 27 28. Yes, sir. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot be the wise, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, shoot unto the king. But there is a God in heaven who yes. reveals the secrets and make it known to the king of Nebuchadnezzar. When what shall be in the latter days, thy dream, the visions of thy head on thy bed are these. We want to talk about what to do when the bottom drops out. used to say, there is a place hotter than this. Amen. It's warm. What to do when the bottom drops out? A late colleague of mine took a trip to an amusement park some years ago and got on a ride known as the Roller. Perhaps you've been 
been on um, one at King's Island. If you lived or visited out west, perhaps you've been on the one at Magic Mountain, where there it is known as the vortex or the spin out. Or if you've lived in the south, maybe you've been on the one at Six Flags, where it's known as the Cajun Cliffhanger. The Rotor, the original ride designed by Ernest Hoffmeister, who was a German engineer in the late 1940s. The rotor is a large upright barrel that travels so fast that when the floor retracts, the riders are stuck into a wall. All right. And then when the floor retracts, the bottom literally drops out. At the end of the cycle, the drum slows down and gravity takes over. The riders slowly slide down the wall and onto what moments before was a flawless ride. Okay. And maybe there's someone here today that life has had you spinning on a cycle where well, well, your back has been up against the wall. Amen. Right now. Oh. Circumstances have you trapped against the wall of despair. A reoccurring sickness, a new diagnosis, where doctors have given you less time to live than they did at your last visit. Or like my sister-in-law, where there was something that was, they thought straightened out, and then she goes back and she's got two problems. Um, back against the wall. Yeah. Then you look down, and it looks like the bottom has just dropped out. Uh, and if you attempt to step out, uh, you do so with the Lord says your own demise. Well, so for our scripture lesson today, in order to appreciate what's taking place in Daniel chapter 2, we've got to go back and look at chapter 1. Well, in chapter 1, Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, yeah. Mishael, and Azariah, yeah. yes, sir. otherwise known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Somebody calls Abednego a bad Negro. It's Abednego. <laughs> Abednego. <laughs> They've been stripped of their ancestral heritage, yes. all right, robbed of their history, That's right. and their background, and even their names Thank have been changed. Yes, yeah. They were forced to learn to comply with the Babylonian society. Uh -huh. They had to learn a new language. They had to learn a new culture. Yes, sir. And as King Nebuchadnezzar had decided, they would sit at his table. Yeah. But Daniel and the three Hebrew boys were right. obtained, decided that they would not defile themselves by sitting at Nebuchadnezzar's table. Mm -hmm. So they ate vegetables and drank water for 10 days. Yeah. And after 10 days, they were fatter and fairer than all of the councils of Babylon. Mm -hmm. They took a risk, and God was at their side. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of vegetarian, all that, I've uh, got a text from Nana talking about, are you eating out a lot? <laughs> Thought I was making smoothies. <laughs> so you'll see I've lost no weight. <laughs> but whenever you risk it all for God, God is sure to stand by your side. Yes, yes, yes. Whenever you declare that you will not compromise, God will reward your integrity. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, along with Daniel, after 10 days of being vegetarians, came as slaves, but had now been elevated to positions equivalent to prime ministers. They're now governors in Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian well, administration. Yes, sir. But then in chapter 2, the bottom falls out. Yep. Their position of prominence and prestige are threatened. Uh, everything they had refused to compromise about is about to fall out from beneath him. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. So he calls in all of the music magicians and soothsayers and the wise men of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. He calls them into council with himself because he wants them to give them an interpretation of this dream mm -hmm. that he had. All right. Nebuchadnezzar says, all of these wise men and soothsayers, I, I need you all to interpret my dream. Mm -hmm. They said to him, King, tell us a dream, yeah. and we'll be able to tell you the interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. 
But Nebuchadnezzar said, I need the interpretation of the dream without me telling you what the dream is. Right. Because if you're wise men and magicians and astrologers, yeah. right. you ought to know the dream yeah. before I tell you what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They said, no man can know what you're trying to ask us. No man can know the interpretation of the dream unless you first tell us what the dream is. Yeah, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar then signs a decree that all the wise men, astrologers, and magicians, and Chaldeans be put to death. Yeah. And that includes Daniel. Yeah. The Bible says that Daniel is about ten times wiser than they were. Yeah. 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 And so the captain that preserved Daniel and his friends with vegetables and water goes to Daniel with the decree signed by Nebuchadnezzar himself that Daniel who is ten times wiser than anybody in the kingdom would be put to death. Yeah. He'd been elevated to prime minister and, and the bottom drops out. Mm -hmm. He'd been given a raise, mm -hmm. a substantial raise, yeah. that is, the bottom has dropped yeah. out. Yeah. He's been given a position of prestige and power, but the bottom mm -hmm. has dropped out. Yeah. 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 Life is going smoothly, yeah. Yeah. but the bottom drops out. Yeah. Yeah. Everything out of roof was coming up close, but the bottom. in his favor, but the bottom drops out. And somebody ought to be able to testify that when life finally starts going your way, every once in a while, the bottom drops out. Your parent is sick, and you got to take care of them for years. You, you worked on a job for 30 or 40 years, and now you're laid off. You plan to retirement. And now all of a sudden you have to take care of your grandkids. Yes, sir. Your marriage hits a pothole. And all of a sudden you find yourself in divorce court. Mm -hmm. The bottom drops out. Yeah. You, you plan for a certain way of life to find only that that's not going to happen now. Yeah. And you're looking for this and yeah. God sends that. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking for something over here and God sends something over there. Yeah. And even though you love God, even though you come to church, yeah. even though you read the Bible, what? just because you're a Christian does not mean that the Bible will drop out. You'll be awfully immature to think that every day is going to be a good day. Sometimes people say, every day when Jesus is sweeter yeah. than the day before, but every once in a while, he's going to drop some bitterness. Some days, if it ain't one thing, yeah. it's another. Yeah. Especially when you get over 50. Yeah. Yesterday was my right shoulder hurt. Yeah. Today, now, it's my left. Right. And I've run out of CBD oil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then if it's not your shoulder, it's your leg. Yeah. If it's not your leg, it's your back. Yeah. If it's not your back, then the washing machine goes out. Yeah. If it's not your washing machine, it's the dryer. Yeah. If it's not the dryer, it's the iron. Yeah. If it's not the iron, it's the air conditioner. Yeah. If it's not the air conditioner, you gotta knock your son in his mouth. Yeah. If it's not your son, your daughter acting a plum fool. Yeah. If it ain't one thing, yeah. it's another. Yeah. Because when you serve God, it does not mean that the bottom won't drop. There is no immunity from life spinning out of control. And here is Daniel in a position of prominence and prestige. Yeah. And now the man who saved him comes to him with a written decree. Uh -huh. that if he cannot give the king not only interp the interpretation of what the dream was in the first place, he will not. Yeah. Yeah. And Daniel teaches us how to respond when the bottom drops out. Mm -hmm. so you can't find the answer in the bottom of a bottle. Yeah. Well, uh, we won't do it. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Heroin and meth and fentanyl yeah, won't fix it. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't snort it away yeah. with cocaine. Yeah. Well, uh, Sometimes your problem with your children or your family or even yourself gets so bad, well, you've got to go down on your knees yeah. Yeah. in prayer and, and say, God, I, I can't fix this. Yeah. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything I know to do, and, and if you if you got to use me, then use me. But but you have to fix this. That's right. That's right. And so here is the first response that Daniel gives us when the bottom drops out. He calls to find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and says to them, "Whatever you all are doing, 
Stop doing it right now. Yeah. I need you to first of all help me pray. Yes, sir. And when you can't handle the situation, if prayer is not your first response, it ought to be the next one. Yeah. Uh, we're so self-absorbed and so uh, tech savvy that we think we can look for answers to life's problem online. But we need to understand that there's some answers you can't find online. Yeah. That there's some things in life that Google and Bing and Yahoo don't have an answer to. Uh, you do know that Wikipedia is modifiable. Yeah. Well, somebody wants to change language with something in Wikipedia, they, they pay a fee and write their own story. Yeah. Yeah. But the only true answer we'll find when our souls are in trouble, when the bottom is dropping out, when our backs are against the wall, is in God himself. Father, the old folks said, I stretch my hand to you. No other help I know. We got to acknowledge I can't handle it, but I know you can. The medical centers have doctors. But God has the power. Wow. Amen. Doctors and pharmacists have medicine, but God's got the power. All right. And there's power in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel says, now brothers and sisters, we, we, you've got a vested interest in this prayer because if I don't get a favorable response, yeah. all of us are going to die. Yeah. Wow. The Bible says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prayed for that. Because yeah. Daniel was given by God the ability to interpret dreams. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he could not interpret the dream unless he knew what the dream was. <laughs> God gave a response after this, after his friends prayed, and somebody said it happens after yes, prayer. Yes, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got off their knees, okay. Daniel had the answer and the interpretation yes, yes. to the dream. Right. Now here's the second response, what you ought to do when the bottom drops out. Yeah. After you pray, yeah. do what Daniel did and give God, secondly, give him some praise. Yeah. Uh, don't act like you made it just because you went to IU East, yeah. Berlin, Ohio State, yeah. OIU. Uh, don't act like you made it because you went to Purdue or Notre Dame yeah. or Alabama yeah. or Clemson yeah. or Harvard or Yale. But just because you graduated with all A's, we should never be too smart to give God the praise he deserves. Now, you do know you can worship God quietly, but you can't praise him quietly. Uh, if God's been good to you, he's worth more than you nodding every once in a while. and giving you a job that you weren't qualified for and made a way for you and got your boy off drugs. What? If God got your child out of jail and got you out of jail, what? you you ought not come around church just sitting with your mouth closed. If it wasn't why you ought to say, hey, Thank you. The fact that we breathe his air and 
experience the breeze of the wind, yeah. the freshness of the rain is reason to thank you. Yeah. And if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'd be. It's not because I went to college. It's not because I came from a good family. I ought to be in jail right now. Some of y'all know that. But God's grace is so amazing that I can't let nobody dictate to me how I praise him. Tune out those that didn't come for the right reason. Uh, some came to criticize. Somebody said, don't take all that. But, but speak for yourself. It does take all that. And if I, if I could go back a little bit, back in the day with Brother Sonny Mason, he'd say, I woke up this morning. Too much 
on his plate. Yeah. David couldn't do it because he's got both adultery and murder charges. Yeah. And only Jesus could handle our deliverance. Yeah. He was tempted at all points like as we yet without sin. Yeah. And God gave us a way out before we even got in. Yes, sir. He forgave us before we even made a mistake. Yeah. He made an exit before we made an entrance because the Lamb was slain yeah. before the foundation of the world. Yeah. He had to pay the bond for the penalty of sin. Yeah. And since he is just, he cannot wink at sin, so he had to satisfy his own nature. Yeah. Yeah. So what God did for us when the bottom dropped out, he became his own provision. Well, that's what that's what his own standard in order to justify man for his own self. Because man was bankrupt and impotent and could do nothing to help himself. So God did it for him. He began to contract with an infinite being and he contracted into a seed, into a virgin woman by the name of Bear. He came down through 42 generations and wrapped himself in incarnated flesh and identified with man by becoming human. But in Vigas 25, it says it took a kinsman to purchase the possession that was lost. And so to become kin to us, God had to become like us. He had to walk in our flesh so he could fulfill the Levitical law that says a kinsman could possess and purchase that which had been lost. Our souls had been lost. Our immortality had been lost. The inheritance of the earth had been lost. So God through Christ became kin to us so he could buy it all back. And through this process, he atoned for our sins. Now, the word atonement spells at one mint. Now, the idea of at one mint suggested that sin separated man and created an at two men. And you know the number has significance. Every number has significance. You Bible readers know that number seven represents God's number of perfection. Number six represents God's number for Satan. Mm -hmm. Number five represents God's number for grace and favor. All right. Number four represents God's number for creation. Number three represents God's number for the Godhead. Mm -hmm. Number two is God's number for separation. Mm -hmm. And if I had time, I'd tell you that he separated light from darkness. Yeah. And then there were two. Yeah. He separated those two fish and five loaves of bread. Yeah. He separated the heaven and earth. Yeah. And then there were two. Two is the number of separation. So there was an atonement that separated and alienated man from God. So there had to be an atonement to bring back the at one men. So through atonement, we're justified. And part of our forgiveness is justification. And justification is a legal term. Uh, we've not only been pardoned, but we've been justified. To be pardoned says that you're guilty. But you're being released because the president has signed a document that pardons you. And lately we do know his pen has used quite a bit of ink, pardoning his partners. But justified is a, di a different term. Justified means that your offense has been erased and that you're no longer guilty and, that, and that's covered by the power of his blood. His blood has literally, Thomas, descend us. His blood is so powerful that they descend us and now we're justified in the eyes of God. Yeah. Psalm 103, 12 says, as far as the east is from the west. Yeah. So far as they removed our transgressions from us. Yeah. Micah 7 says he cast our sins into the depths of the sea. First yeah. John 1, 9 says we confess our sins. Yes, Be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Yeah. And then to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Yeah. So when the bottom dropped out, Things look mighty bad. Yeah. When we look at dysfunctional families, yeah. when we look at the crime and drug infestation in our community, it looks mighty bad. Yeah. And there are pessimists who say that there's no way to make sense out of the breakdown of our society. Yeah. But I came to tell you that God has the power. Yes. He has the answer to our human power. Mm -hmm. He came and he died for our sin. He rose early Sunday morning with all yeah. power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. And he's coming back soon. Yeah. The first time he came, he came to receive death. Mm -hmm. But when he comes again, he's coming to rebuke death. Well, the first time he came, he came as a victim. Mm -hmm. But when he comes again, he's coming as a victor. Well, yeah. right. The first time he came, he came in misery. But when he comes again, he's coming in majesty. Yes, sir. The first time.
time he came. He came to deal with man's gift. Yes, sir. But when he comes again, he's coming in glory. Yeah. The first time he came, Come on, he came as a carpenter. Yes, sir. But when he comes again, he's coming as a conqueror. Yeah. The first time he came, they didn't know who he was. But when he comes again, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. But he the Lord of all. The first time he came, he came riding on a donkey. But when he comes again, he'll be riding a plow. When the plow say, ride on now, King Jesus. No man can I him to me. Ride on now, King Jesus. No man. Shall we all say together, Amen. 